All right, we are now live. Perfect. I'm going to share this inside of the group. Okay. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Who else is here? I want to see. I might have to refresh, see what's going on here with that before we get started. Scroll down. There we go. All right. Elevator music. <laughs> huh? Elevator music. Yes. <laughs> I my I had to switch off to um to Wi-Fi to make sure I saw it um mm. first. All right, cool. Okay. Hey Sierra. Hey Nishamini. Hey Amy Riley. Okay, we are live for real for real. <laughs> All right. So I would love to go ahead and get started. And as people are, are coming into the room, y'all make sure to say hello, make sure that you send some love, uh, tap that heart button and make sure you share this out because not only is this day three of the Be Your Own Thirst Trap Challenge and we have our um, lovely co-host tonight, Miss Shamika Argo, but it's also her birthday. And we got some folks wishing you happy birthday in the Thank comments. Thank you, ladies. So thank if, you, if we would love for you to share this out because we know that it's going to be another uh, really great conversation and a really great session. And we definitely have um, the, the vibes coming through tonight. So we would appreciate that. So welcome um, everyone to day three and welcome Shamika. Again, once again, I'm not going to butcher her intro because she <laughs> does not need me to um, introduce herself. She, she does that quite well on her own. So I'm going to let you kick it off and introduce <laughs> yourself and we will go ahead and get started. Listen, I, I suppose I should be able to talk about myself at least a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shamika Argo. I'm on, owner of Points of Origin and also Nova Luna Coach. Um, I'm super excited to be here, to be honest with you. Um, I sat in on, on Monday and I was wearing so many hats, you know, wanting to, you know, be here obviously to support you, be here to support the ladies, you know, in their journey to being more confident and really just being able to enjoy themselves. And then I was bouncing back and forth between like therapist hat and like feeding off of Ivory's vibes. And I'm like, <laughs> so, but in all honesty, like with point, both points of origin and Nova Luna coach, I'm super passionate about like teaching people to love themselves and learning from people as well. And to be honest with you, a lot of that has to do with an appreciation, understanding that we kind of, we, we are constantly changing. So being able to help people be aware of that and also be prepared for that and accept that. And so, I mean, in all honesty, that's why I'm here. That's why when you sent me that message and you were like, this is what we're doing. I mean, Latoya didn't even ask. She wasn't like, do y'all want to come and do this with me next week? She was just like, this is what we're doing. And everybody was like, we'll be there. <laughs> That's one of the things that I love about Latoya, though. She's really good at bringing people together. She knows who supports her and she knows that we're here for her. And so I appreciate that, to be honest with you, to, to be one of those people to, you know, just pull me right on in. I'm here. I'm there. So I'm excited. Yes. And to, to join in and to do it on your birthday too, like that, that's, that's love. That's love right there, y'all. So um, I'm really excited to have Shamika here. She is not only a wealth of knowledge, but just a, a really great person. Um, and I saw her um, on Monday night taking her notes. So I knew she was ready and she, and, and to me, that just goes to show like how much this challenge and this opportunity for us to connect is, is so needed because we all, you, me, Shamika, Tori, like we all 
are here to help each other and to to serve um, the women who are in this challenge and to ensure that you know what we uh, what they desire to get out of this is what we 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 are putting out there. So um, I appreciate you for being here. So um, I want to first find out a little bit about how you got into therapy and what led you to that industry. I honestly feel like it was an acceptance of things that like I felt naturally pulled to. Um, I uh, My mom has four kids. I am the second oldest and I'm the first girl. And then I have two younger sisters that I was raised with. And so naturally I kind of was thrown into the role of, of caretaker. And so I feel like not only was that role kind of given to me, but I was born into it at the same time. And so I've had a couple of other experiences in my childhood to where I kind of naturally went into like, you know, crisis mode, Let, let's take care of people, what's needed. And I was just there, even in like group activities and things like that in school, I found myself naturally going into the leader position and being excited about like, not only learning, but again, teaching people and I would find myself even frustrated when they didn't want to learn from me. <laughs> That's that, so, Cap that Capricorn. Yeah. Energy. <laughs> yeah. Capricorn energy strong. Like, like Ivory and I would say gang, gang, like in all honesty, it's there. I, I feel like I was born into that role and I find myself even with my friends reminding myself that, you know, I'm not quite a therapist here, but if you'll let me, <laughs> let's talk. Cause I feel like I can help you here. So as far as therapy goes, like, I feel like I have been able to use so many different parts of myself as a therapist to not only feel great, but to see other people also feel and be great. And to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I will probably always be a therapist, whether I'm in the office or not, simply because I feel so amazing seeing other people being able to use the things that we talked about and that we've done and then go out into the world and be great as well and then also share that with other people i love that um and you don't really hear people say that a lot uh that they'll they'll always be in the field that they're in and you know whether it looks different later on so that that's a testament to how truly like um passionate you are about what it is that you do um, thing I ever wanted to do, which is insane <laughs> <laughs> to say that it's insane. So tell us, I know that you are not from South Carolina. So tell us about a little bit, tell us a little bit about where you're from and what led you here. So I am originally from Kansas. I was born and raised in Kansas. Um, the first of my mother's children to be born there. I appreciate Kansas for so many different reasons and so many different parts of Kansas that I've brought with me, including the color yellow. Like the sunflower, <laughs> the, the sunflower is so big and bright on the Kansas state flag. Uh, but in all honesty, um, I also, my father and his family is from North Carolina. And so I would spend summers in North Carolina. And in North Carolina, I was a good old country girl. You know, I was talking to my friend earlier and he was talking about going to go play poker later. I was like, I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> I learned how to play poker in the country because when you're in the country, what else do you do but play cards? <laughs> So I find myself actually in the office sometimes and I'm like showing off and shuffling cards. I'm like, yeah, there's that North Carolina good old country girl energy right there. Um, but between the two, in all honesty, like I come from Kansas, spend the summers in North Carolina and I found myself like, I knew that I didn't want to stay in Kansas. Again, I love and appreciate it for what it is. So many people in Kansas, I, I see them all the time over my Facebook page and they're showing me so much appreciation. And I, I feel Kansas in my, in my bones, but I knew I wasn't going to stay. <laughs> I knew that I had so much energy and I needed to spend it somewhere. So I literally, my father's family came to visit me for my graduation. Seven o'clock in the morning after graduation, I was in the van with them headed to the coast. And uh, I, had, I wasn't certain at that point where I was going to go, but I ended up in Virginia for a year and then in Charlotte. And last year in Charlotte, I met a man, and the man is from this area. And, you know, at that point, I was already a Rolling Stone, had been between two different states all my life. So there's nothing left in Charlotte. So why not continue, you know, the energy and roll on? So I rolled on out of Charlotte, 
And again, Charlotte's another, it's another place that I call home as well. I feel like I grew a lot in each of those four areas. And uh, I appreciate all of that. I'm glad to be able to take all four of those areas with me. But um, I've probably grown the most in Greenville, to be honest with you. Um, I feel very much so at home. And it has a lot to do with the people that I've met here, uh, including you, to be honest with you. I feel so, so, so much of a sense of community here. Um, I don't feel awkward in Greenville. I don't feel weird in Greenville. And those are two of the things that I've kind of kind of come with me throughout my, my life and my childhood. I don't feel that anymore. Yeah. Um, one thing I really uh, have found that I love about Greenville too is that most of the people that I have met, um, maybe about 50%, 50% of the people that I've met while being in Greenville, because I'm not from Greenville either, are also not from Greenville. We're all transplants. And so that's one thing that I think that we connect on um, is that we are coming from these different areas, different places, but we, we find Greenville to be our home and we find comfort and like contentment here and just appreciating like what Greenville has to offer. But the community for sure is something that um, really stood out to me. Now, I when I left, um, when I graduated from college, um, we moved to upstate New York for a year. It was like a stint with um, an assignment that I was on with my job. Um, but we always knew it was going to be temporary. Yeah. I knew that I wanted to come back to South Carolina. And Greenville was kind of like first on that 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 list. But I, I didn't necessarily know that Greenville was where home was going to be. So I'm glad that it is um, because uh, I wouldn't have met you across the street. <laughs> literally across the street. So Shamika and I are literally neighbors. Like I can see her house from where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> um, but I'm really appreciative uh, of that and the fact that we met and just how um, how how big a part of this community, the Greenville Boudoir community that you've become um, and just having you a part of this space and, and sharing your your love and your light with us. Um, one of the main things that uh, we wanted to, that I wanted to talk to you about tonight and for you to share with us and those uh, ladies who are part of this challenge is um, talking about courage and um, talking about, of course, like confidence. That's um, one of the, a big part of this challenge. But could you talk a little bit about even how you work with your clients about uh, where they're least confident or where they have fears and worries and how you help them with that? I've been kind of thinking about this a little bit um, and kind of preparing to come and talk to you guys today. And in all honesty, it's a very like a uh, broad question because so many people, like we talked about on Monday, struggle with confidence for so many different reasons. And so in the office, what I like to do is to try and not only get to know the clients, but figure out like, what is it and why? And so a lot of times it's going back and figuring out like the stories that go along with that feeling. And a lot of times, as you know, there have been some things about bullying, things that we see in social media, you know, things that family members have said, you know, beliefs that family members, like parents and grandparents have. And realizing that these people are sending these messages and they're different from how you feel. But then you're told that you can't feel that way. And we end up having this conflict. It's like, okay, so if you tell me that I can't feel that way, but I do feel that way, I'm confused as I'll get it. I don't understand because I know what I feel. So how am I not supposed to? do this thing, but I know that I physically can't. And so a lot of times when we're talking about like working on confidence and looking at our bodies and you know, I feel this way or I feel that way, it has a lot to do with what stories have you told yourself and what stories have people told you? What stories have you seen? What do you think and or feel or believe is working for other people? And do you understand why? Because a lot of times all of those things are rooted in things that are not actually true, which is why there's so much conflict because they're not really based on anything. But if you really go down and dig 
and break down each of those statements that you've been told and you see that it's not true, I want to know why are you believing it? Mm. What did you tell yourself to make it make sense? And can we find evidence to tell you that that's a lie? And then how do we reframe it so you can now rewrite your narrative based on actual facts? That's how we actually end up building confidence is we break down those stories, we break down those lines, and we replace those, those mistruths with actual facts because then you have something to base it on. That's what I can. That's what I was talking about yesterday. I can and I did. So what do you mean I can't? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's that is. You really broke that down in a way I've never heard it broken down before. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm sure that you see this a lot where it it may be hard for people to get to that point. Um, mm-hmm. what would you say is one of the biggest, like, um, uh, barriers to kind of figuring out what that breakthrough is for them? Like how, when they need to, to, to get to that point where they're recognizing what that mistruth is and then getting to the other side of like, okay, this is something that I have to unlearn and then relearn. It's a lot of, I think, first thing that came to mind for me was discomfort. Like w- people are so afraid of being uncomfortable. <laughs> they fear it for so many different reasons. Of course, there are lots of reasons. That, and re- the reasons make sense. They're valid. If you feel it, it's absolutely valid. But why are you so afraid of being uncomfortable? What are you actually afraid of? Because it's not really discomfort. I think we should really be a lot more um, brave, courageous at being more comfortable with being uncomfortable. What tends to happen and what I tell my clients is get to that point where you're uncomfortable and do a little more mm. and then you stop. You take those steps back and then you assess, you, you go down and you look at, okay, so I was uncomfortable. I got uncomfortable at this point. The information that I got, so we're looking for facts and not honesty. The information that I was able to obtain between this point of discomfort and the point where I decided to stop what is what does that mean how do I feel about this information how do I make sense of it and what do I think it means about me we continue to ask and try and figure out why do you feel this way about this particular this thing and find truths you can go back and find evidence as far as okay well when I was seven this happened or mom said this or I got this message from me sometimes it's difficult to find those messages but you keep doing it. You get uncomfortable, give yourself space to be uncomfortable and continue going back through that process and use the actual information in that space and create a new narrative. We do it time and time again and we will start to see that not only are things lining up, I can and I did, there's evidence, it's lining up, but now we feel less stressed. Now our, our discomfort, we don't reach discomfort here anymore. We reach it here. We become more resilient. But the issue is people have a struggle with being uncomfortable and then actually doing the work between the space. Mm. They get uncomfortable, they get here, and then they stop, they put it away, they sweep it under the rug, and then they start tripping over it and they're freaking out because I'm tripping and I'm falling. Why do I keep falling? Because you forgot to take care of that, that trash over there. You yeah. forgot to actually put it in the trash can and or where it needs to go. You forgot that that trash didn't belong to you and you need to go give it back to the person it belonged to. Mm. That's why you're tripping. Yes. Yes, I love that. And as you were saying that, what it made me think about is, um, and I see she's on here, Marissa. So Marissa uh, is a personal trainer. And I, like, whenever I'm working out with her um, and she sees that I'm like, my muscles are like shaking and you know I'm like she can she can tell I'm just ready to just like be done she's like how much more do you have in you like give me give me a little bit more so I definitely see like the um comparison or the similarities like even in just like the physical work of exercising um and giving that you know extra five ten percent to get out of like that zone of you know, this, this hurts or this is burning, not hurts. This is burning right now. 
<laughs> but if I do a little bit more, I can just push myself a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm going to get stronger. My physically going to get stronger. And in the sense of, you know, uh, facing those things that make us uncomfortable or facing those things that, you know, we're, we're not like always eager to confront. I definitely can see how that, um, aligns. So yes, I <laughs> That's I do it in the gym too. Like I've I've never I can't really say that I've ever had like a consistent personal trainer, but I mean I already can attest to this. Capricorns, we don't <laughs> stop. <laughs> we just don't. So I can't tell you like how many times I'm like, I don't want to do the elliptical today. But you know what? I'm trying to get to 3.5 miles and I'm trying to do it in this this amount of time, but I don't want to do it today. So I'll get to the gym and I get to two miles. And I'm like, this this is horrible. I'm not gonna make it today. But I will see that I'm like in the middle of a mile. So I'll be like, okay, I can make it to two miles. I can do that. And I can do that in this amount of time. And I'll get that in like, man, in 30 seconds, that's all I need to get to 2.5. Which it is. And so and it makes me think about like this um this video I watched where this guy, it was, and you guys have probably seen it. It was um a coach and they were on a football field and he was talking to the captain. And the captain was like, well, you know, I can't do this. And so, the, I mean, the, the coach tells him, yes, you can. So he tells him, well, basically, I'm paraphrasing from memory, tells the guy, I want you to carry this dude across the field on the back. And I think he was like, you know, I forget what it's called, but he was like walking, like in a push-up, like in a plank position. And so he blindfolds him and puts the other player on his back. And he tells him, I need you to go to, to the center of the field. And he's like, I can't do that. He's, yes, you can. Go to the center of the field and then you can stop. The guy gets to the he's like, let's say the, the player on the sack's like 165. Gets to the middle of the field and the coach doesn't tell him to stop. He, his, he kicks in. His lack of awareness kicks in and he decides, I got to push it. His coach hasn't said stop yet. So he ends up, I want to say, getting to, all the way to the other side of the field. Guy never thought he could get halfway. But because he wasn't present enough to stop himself, he did way more than he thought he could. Mm-hmm. We literally get in our own way. If we don't challenge ourselves to get past that one discomfort, how, how do we expect to ever make it? It makes no sense to expect to do more if you don't believe you can do more. And then not only that, you challenge yourself to do more. And again, like you were talking about with Marissa in the gym, she says you can do it. You got to get to that point where he says, okay, I did do it. Why in the world did I say I couldn't begin with? Now I have evidence to say I can do more than I think I can. And then you actually use it. What people tend to do is they're like, oh, that heifer, she made it. That. <laughs> they start blaming it on the other person <laughs> instead of using that time to reflect on the evidence and saying, I did do it. I can do more. Why not do more? Yes. Uh, the, so I'm glad you brought it back to that evidence piece because that is that is so huge like especially for us as you know complex humans with our, our our brains and our you know the way we think about things like we always want to see the evidence of things before we believe it or before we feel like it's actually true which you know now don't don't take my words y'all y'all listen don't take that out of context uh (laughs) stay on stay on point here (laughs) but I literally just went through the same thing today I think it today or yesterday so um you know I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old um who they're they're with me all day every day (laughs) Um, and then some days and some nights um their dad isn't here. So it's like all on me to, you know, make sure that, you know, they stick to their routines and, you know, they're fed and bathed and clothed and all that good stuff. Right. And then there are just days where I'm just tired. And I'm just like, how, how am I going to get this done? Like, why? Like, like you said, putting the blame, like, why couldn't he just be here? Or why can't they just be quiet and just do what they're told? Or why this, why that, why that? And then, sometimes I'm just like in that I get in that zone where I'm like you know what I don't I've done this before that Uh evidence like I I know that I can do this I'm I'm really just like 
mentally just like fucking with myself to to put it like in the words that just make sense to me like why am I overcomplicating this um and it really whenever I do you know kind of zone out like you said you know you have to kind of um when you were talking about the the man who was carrying uh the guy across the field where he had to step outside of that awareness for a second and just like keep going and you realize well dang like I got I got the laundry done today like you know I I I cook lunch and dinner today and put away you know the the laundry and all this stuff it's like okay that's that evidence so um I love how you mentioned, you know, kind of stepping a little bit further outside of that comfort so that you can see. And then when you go back to, you know, reflecting on that situation, whatever that looks like for you, and then y'all can take this and apply it to whatever Mm -hmm. makes sense for you. Um, It is, uh, it's like, why do I, and we keep doing it over and over again, which is crazy, but that makes total sense how you, how you frame that. We get in our heads and I mean to, really think about it we are our own worst enemies and you people say that all the time but they don't really know what that means they don't realize what they're saying what they're really saying is i have all the control and i'm using it foolishly Mm. why it doesn't make sense well Mm. i mean behaviorally it makes sense (laughs) (laughs) but in the grand scheme of things it really doesn't make sense if you have all the control and the power, why not use it to your advantage? Why not use it to level yourself? Why not use it to feel good? Why not use it to accept what you have and the journey you've been through? Why not use the nuggets from those journeys to your benefit so that you can create an even more bountiful journey ahead? You have all the control. People don't realize that that's what they're saying when they say, I'm my own worst enemy. Uh huh. You can also be your best ally. Mm. Why not? True. Speaking of being your own best ally, um, what are some uh, practical ways or practical tips you would give someone who feels like they are uh, super self-conscious about who they are, how they show up, and you know, basically not being their most confident self whenever they go you know, whenever they walk into a room. So what would you tell someone who is kind of struggling with that? There are so many different things you can do. And again, I'm a therapist, so everything is individualized. (laughs) But in the grand scheme of things, it has a lot to do with being honest with yourself. So for instance, let's say I'm still, I can still be shy sometimes. I used to be super shy when I was young, um, but I was able to accept that. And I was still able to find a way to stand out being shy. And so a large part of the whole confidence and in kind of practical ways is focusing on not staying still, but also looking at integration. So if you are shy, if you are this, if you are that, if you get angry sometimes, don't be dismissive of those things. Accept them again as fact. Yes, I get angry sometimes. Yes, I raise my voice sometimes but I also am kind. I also just helped my neighbor. I also just did this. Integrate all of that and just be honest. Don't say, okay, well, let's see, I gave an example the other day Um, and I'm gonna make up a different example. But basically there's, there are oftentimes conflicts that we experience and what people tend to do is they tend to go very much so black and white. So they can be very smart but then they have ignorant moments. And instead of saying, you know, I'm I'm ignorant or I'm smart, why not simply say, I know a lot of things, but there are some things that I don't and I'm a bit foolish in trying to understand them. Mm. That's the truth, right? Why do we have to polarize it and make it black or white in things where it doesn't make sense? The integration, it all makes sense because it's all true. You really can't fight facts. You can fight opinions and you can fight those all day long. Oh, goodness. (laughs) So (laughs) back to like practical ways, it's super difficult to push past discomfort. I acknowledge that. But a practical way to address discomfort is also knowing what your strengths are 
knowing what helps you be comfortable. So sometimes like if you're shy, take a person with you that makes you feel brave mm. or take something with Y'all you. Y'all better write that down. <laughs> if you are, you know, concerned about something, figure out, go back and say, okay, well, I'm concerned about this. What do I think about when I'm concerned about this? What comes to mind? What's true? Which of those things are true? Which of those things are not true? And the things that are not true usually are opinions and or they contain extremes. So extremes are like, they, the extremes, I, I use the word extremes because they pinpoint, those are easy ways to tell yourself that you are thinking irrationally. And everybody has irrational thoughts. Even I have irrational thoughts. And we're most likely to have them when we're like experiencing intense emotions. And so I'm going to go on a tangent real quick because I want to make sure you guys are understanding what I'm meaning when I say that. We can, any emotion can be intense. Even happiness or excitement can be intense. Sadness, anger, those things can be intense. I'll give you an example of like an excited um, party. Let's say today's my birthday. So let's say you threw me a surprise birthday party. I might be super excited, love it, feeling elated. And I might say something like, man, I could do this every day. Like, I love it here. I kid you not. <laughs> After about three hours, <laughs> it's going to be time for y'all to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said always, <laughs> every day. Those are extremes. Mm. If anybody is using those words, they're lying. It's really that simple because it will not, that you will be able to find evidence to say that it will not always be true. And it's the same thing when we are having conversations with ourselves. So when you're looking at, okay, well, this is, I'm feeling anxious, or I'm concerned, and you're writing these things down, pull out those things. I, I could do this every day. No, I can do this for about three hours. And so you change it. You reframe it to every, from every day to three hours or something that's very true. And you want to base it off a of fact. Last time I had a surprise birthday party, about three and a half hours, <laughs> I was checked out. I was up in the bedroom. I, I was over it or I started being rude to everybody and they had to go <laughs> <laughs> write those things down see it all really goes back to being honest mm -hmm. and yeah. when we're talking about like self-esteem you know one of the things that we and you know men have these the same issues we have to they just they see it different it looks different they feel insecure the same way we feel insecure but when you think about like your body you know we, we have we have babies Babies change our bodies. Our hormones change our body. Our health changes our body. Our ages oftentimes will change our bodies. But can you find some truth to the journey that your body has been through? Can you find a way to appreciate that journey and find nuggets and things that you've actually been able to take from those experiences? Uh, I, I could say something about like, even I have a fairly large breasted. I'll go there because that was the first thing that came to mind. When I, had, when I was pregnant with my son, these things grew ridiculously. And like I had, I ended up finding a bra like years later and I'm like, man, I can't believe my breasts got that big. They were already big. But then I'm like, okay, they got that big. How amazing is it that my body can do that? That my body can transform and not only transform in such a way, but it can feed a whole ass baby. Mm. So being able to go back and look at the, you know, the truth and even like in myself, like, I have some interesting feet. When I was young, I did not appreciate them. But my feet have carried me so many places. My feet set the foundation for my strength, which I am so proud of and I love. So I've been able to find a way to say, you know what? You're not the best looking thing in the book, <laughs> but you are worth lots of things. And I appreciate you for that. Yeah. So being able to, again, be honest, see things for what they are. And when we're confused, but when we hear these extremes, these always, the nevers, the every time, reframe them to sometimes or that time when, or in this particular situation, or you know, Friday at six o'clock, this is what happened. When we go back and we take out those extremes and we make them facts, we make them truths, and even incorporate our own emotions and feelings for what they were, we tend to not feel anxious this much but we will feel anxious this much. It doesn't go away because you still feel anxious. It's still the truth. It still triggered a sense of anxiety or you know, it's, it was still a self-esteem blow, but now it's not as much. 
and I'm only this much uncomfortable. I'm not this much uncomfortable to the point where I feel like I need to fight myself or that person because they told me I was fat. Mm. I love the way that you, you broke down like why extremes are not productive and useful for us. And I've always been one where I, I always knew that I, I, I didn't um, subscribe to any sort of extreme ideologies, left or right, whatever you want to call it, political or, or otherwise. Um, I just, like you said, like there's, there's always truth. And then there's always different perspectives as well. And like you said, you know, you, you cannot fight, you cannot dispute like what's what's a fact, uh, how you feel about something. You can't dispute how you feel. You know, maybe the reasons um, you you're you're feeling them may come from some things that may not be true, but you cannot dispute like how you feel about it. So I, I really appreciate how you broke that down about why those. Um, why extremes are not helpful for us Mm -hmm. um and i saw there's some um some really great comments here i want to go back to so heather was talking about changing the story you tell yourself and i think that is huge 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 Mm -hmm. um so um you you kind of took me back to literally why greenville boudoir exists so um of course i I had, well, I had Kent when um, I was 22 years old and Liana came six years later. I was 28 when I had her body um, quite different. And not only had my body changed after baby number two, like I had recently a year before had like back surgery and my body had changed then Um, just, just lots of things happening. Right. Um, So I felt like I was constantly like my body was constantly changing in different mm-hmm. ways, whether it was changing how it looked, how it grew, how it felt. It pad out on you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. I'm gonna have she's gonna have to send me an invoice by the end of the night. Y'all. No, I'm trying to make sure that I can get back to these points because you're making some some of the things that you're saying are like, ah, oh, I need to say this about that. And so yeah. I'm gonna get my notepad out so I can okay. try and do that. But, but keep going because I'm listening. Okay, okay. And so it was, it was yet another thing that I had to, um, embrace, or at least like, uh, be honest with myself about with my body. Right. Because I remember before my back surgery, I, I was like super, super thin. I mean, I'm already like skinny, but like, I was super thin at that time because I could a lot. I remember Mm -hmm. like you could literally see like, my my rib cage and my ribs are down here and not up here but you can see you can see (laughs) you can see like my bones for real for real um and in my face and I just remember like I even remember Kent saying something about like mommy like I can see your bones and like I know baby mommy's body just hurts right now because I couldn't move like I wasn't exercising anymore um I pro- I don't even think I was like eating as well as I probably used to have. Um, and then, you know, I got the surgery and then, you know, my body felt better and then I got pregnant mm-hmm. and then my body changed yet again, but it changed in a completely different way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after that, it was like, okay, you know, I've been pregnant before. I kind of know like what's, mm-hmm. things are going to change. Cool. Mm-hmm. But then I didn't know what was going to happen because it didn't, you know, I, my body didn't um, bounce back, as they say, um, mm-hmm. quite the same as it did when I had Kent. And mm-hmm. then there was a lot of like insecurities um, just just in seeing myself. And then not that I, I thought that I looked bad or terrible. Right. I didn't really, um, I wasn't disgusted by myself. I just was like, wait a minute, this is not what I expected to happen. Mm-hmm. And that was the big thing. I know you're going to write that down, that expectation. I know that's, that's a big one, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and then I had, uh, my maternity session done and I was just like, oh my goodness, like, why am I tripping? <laughs> exactly. And then I look back at, at my that's maternity it. pictures and I, and I really saw like, there was, it was a difference. Like my, I carry differently. Um, I look differently, but I still had that evidence of like what my body was able to, to do the second time. Like, why am I tripping over this? 
Um, and so, you know, a few months later, I think it, she, this was in October when I did my first boudoir session for myself. So Liana had to have been like nine months, eight months or nine months or so. And that was also super eye-opening for me. Um, because I kind of had, I had to go through the whole thing, like the client student, you know, picking out the wardrobe. Like I, you know, my, my tummy, um, I was self-conscious about my tummy. So I, I knew that I was going to pick something that, that, uh, concealed my tummy, but I also picked something that bore it too. Just, just, so, just so that I got out of that comfort zone a little bit. Um, and those weren't necessarily my favorite images, but I was proud of myself for doing it. And I think that was still very um, helpful in me and kind of pushed me along in that journey to accepting myself now. Now, I, re- I don't care. Like, to me, it is what it is. Like, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm not, um, I don't feel like my body did me wrong in any way. Now, I'm not going to say that it's like my, my favorite part of my body, but I have embraced it in ways that I think that had I not... Uh, done some some work to try to appreciate that that I would have seen that so that's why I do what I do y'all if you didn't know there's the story there's the reason why I had that experience for myself I saw how impactful it was for me and I want to do that for other women too regardless of whether you're a mom or not um so and it's the same for me as far as like therapy we we all start from somewhere but I mean I'm human too I've had my experiences and I'm super grateful for all of my experiences, to be honest with you. But like the fact that I chose to set up my life the way that I did, I chose to learn, I chose to work in the field, I chose to expose myself to so many different people and being able to be open to finding their beauties without judgment was really helpful for me to go in and, and look inwards at myself and do some of the same things that I've mentioned today. You know, I, I, can, I tend to get very excited easily and be high energy, but I can also be super quiet. I don't get angry often, but it's because I do those same things. I go back and as soon as I feel bothered, whether it's from something that somebody did or said, or a thought that I had about myself, I'm able to say, okay, that didn't feel good. I wonder why it didn't feel good. Let's talk about it. And I have these conversations with myself and say, okay, so what was it about this thing that led me to feel that way? And a lot of times it goes back to one of my core, like um, driving like energies in myself and it's to accomplish, to be successful. And if I don't feel like I'm being successful, I tend to Capricorn, go hard. Mm. And sometimes I have to take a step back and realize that even though that's my nature, going hard is not likely the answer to actually get me what I want. Mm. So it's uh, it's always about going back and checking in and even being able to give yourself mercy. So this is my nature. But if I give myself mercy, I can accept the fact that even though I am perfect, that's not the perfect answer to this particular you know situation. So it's no longer perfect in this moment. So I need to give myself mercy and accept and acknowledge who I am and say, OK, well, Latoya, this is not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> but I think it might be in yours. <laughs> Can mm-hmm. we do something together? So it's not about like um, competing, but being open to be collaborative, being open to the differences of other people and even the differences of, of yourself. So we are constantly changing. I'm a different me than even I was yesterday. And I've had a pretty even high day today, but there are some days where I'm different than I was 30 minutes ago or even five minutes ago, let's say I get triggered by something, something happened that wasn't planned and it's, you know, it's a little bit shaking. I'm different. But what we choose to not do, unfortunately, is give ourselves mercy to accept that, that dissonance and acknowledge it as being okay. So like when our bodies change, it, it's changing for a reason. How is that not okay? How is it not okay for your body to be beautiful as it is carrying this baby? How's it not okay for you to gain 20 pounds? I don't, I, to be honest with you, I can't tell you how much I gained with my child. Kind of scared to have another one because I gained at least 60 pounds. I stopped counting at 60, but every single one of those pounds are beautiful. I kid you not. There was one day when I ate five cupcakes in one day. I should have gained some weight, right? (laughs) I should have. So why would I be mad? Because I gained weight and I ate five cupcakes in one day. It makes sense. 
So how does it make sense for me to beat myself up about the decisions that I make? And it's the same thing about like, about our bodies. I want to really think about it. Like a conversation that I had with myself several times was, I weigh 170 now, don't look like it. I get 135, 140 all day long. And that makes me feel great. So keep saying it. But I'm a whole 170. There were times where I was like 190. And even like when I look at the pictures from like earlier of last year, and then we ended up doing the July challenge, I didn't think I was fat. And there was a good couple of months where I'm like, I wasn't 190 last year. The facts are the doctor says I was 192 last year. And so instead of like fighting, I kid you not, I feel I felt good in every single picture I took, every single picture I posted, regardless of the size, I didn't see myself as fat. A lot of it has to do with the narrative that we are telling ourselves. We don't have to be anything that anybody else expects for us to be. We get to decide. And I didn't see myself as fat. But I kid you not, when I look at those pictures side by side, homegirl, you look good now. You was looking good there too, but you still look different. You still look different. So I think when you talked about like, what can we do? We can also be kind to ourselves. Mm. We can also have, you know, positive self-talk. One thing that I tell the clients all the time is, if you believe something to be true, you should also believe at the same time the opposite could be true. So if something is true, it can also be a lie. I say that to say, if if you have this thing about your body that you don't like, it can also be absolutely beautiful. Why not choose to see it as beautiful? You have the control, right? Why not use it? The facts, the facts. So <laughs> I'm laughing at the comments because somebody said, is eating five cupcakes in one day bad? <laughs> I'm, I'm still here and I'm still happy, so it, it couldn't have been that bad. It, like I it said, was, cupcakes, <laughs> it was literally cupcakes are, are delicious. So I was talking to my kid about this the other day. I said, You would be allergic to wheat. It's because I ate those five cupcakes in one day. I was trying to get it in. <laughs> I was trying to feed you them cupcakes before you couldn't eat cupcakes. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. This has been a really, really, really good conversation so far. Um, and we are, I, it, I can't believe like it's already 48 minutes past since we start, t- start talking. So I would love to switch gears a little bit. Um, and if anyone wants to come on live, um, let me go ahead and drop this link for you too. Um, if you're not comfortable, if you, if you just don't want to come on live, um, please put your questions in the comment so um, Shamika can answer. But there is the link if you want to come on. Um, Thank you so much, Shamika, for everything that you've shared with us. It has been... um, (laughs) Sorry, I I can't focus. Y'all talking about donuts now. Like, that is one way to get me off... (laughs) to get me off um off focus y'all talking about food talking about sweets because that is definitely like where I my my so we me and Lee just came back from Colombia and my grandmother she cooked dinner for us she had dinner ready for us and everything and then she had like a a whole like red velvet um cake sitting on the table I brought like four slices back home and you best believe when I get off this call guess what we finna do <laughs> I have eaten a whole half a cake several times in my life, including like the past two or three months. I think I had two half cakes. But <laughs> the thing about it is, why would I beat myself up about my body when it's only giving, it's only responding to what I put into it? And it, even if we talk about, you know, some heavier stuff, like give yourself mercy because your body is still strong even after having had that experience. Yes. Your body is physically be like our bodies tell such amazing stories. I, I think we should be able to work towards appreciating every single story that our body is able to tell us. And like we were talking about squishy, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, I want to tie in. I'm a I'm a therapist, y'all, real quick. <laughs> and we have we have Toots in the in the room too. So she's okay. going to ask her question after you're done. Okay. When 
we're talking about like um, perspective. Like people, people tell stories and they respond from every single every single um like experience. The way that somebody's responding is based on their past experiences and their perspective, not you. So even if you think about like kids talking, coming up to you and like squishing you, like my kid has done that too. He's like, I'm so glad you have me because you're so squishy and I like that you're squishy. He's talking about it from his perspective. He's not calling me fat. I'm the one who's using my past experiences and my thoughts and turning it into an attack when they're saying things like that. Now, he's finding my squishy beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I love that. So keep squishing, kid. Keep squishing. <laughs> Hey Toots, how are you? Hi. Good. Can you can you hear me? Oh wait, yes, we can hear okay. you. Hi. So um I rather than resolutions, I've been trying to do words for my years. So last year my word was love. And I really was like looking for that outwardly rather than inwardly. And I didn't start to find it for myself until December, which is like sad, but also like, I'm glad that it came. It happened. Now what are we going to do with it? And that, that's what it is. It's like, I'm like, as sad as I have been that it took me so long, like yeah. throughout the year, the 12 months, like it came in the 12th month for me. I'm like, wow, like I'm feeling it for me. Like, fuck what everybody else thinks or feels about me. Like, it's time for me to feel for me. Um, And so my word for this year is acceptance. Uh And it's acceptance mostly of myself. And I am, I've always been a very vulnerable person (laughs) and I'm working on that even more. Yeah, let's Um, not talk about that. It's not. It's not at all. You know what? Like I heard this thing online not too long ago and I it a hundred percent resonated with me. The strongest thing that someone can do is actually to be vulnerable. Yes. Like, honestly, like to be available in a way that you can be vulnerable to yourself, that's extremely powerful. So but and- I, I don't like the way that you're using it. The way that you're using it is as a personal attack. And I don't want you to frame your, your, your days like that. I want you to frame your days in a way that you can actually do something with it. And that, that's, I guess that's what I'm struggling with is, is because, um, like I shared before, is that all my life I've been told that my sensitivity would never get me anywhere and then it would only hold me back. Uh-huh. And I'm realizing that my sensitivity is actually empowering me and getting me further like I'm a preschool teacher I work with children the reason I do it was because Mr. Rogers had such a deep impact on my childhood because I felt so lonely as a as a little kid and I don't want anybody to ever feel that way that young and to go through the struggles that I've gone through in the last almost 38 years of my life and and that's I I want, and I I want to be, I want to give myself what I'm giving others and to feel that for myself, because how can I give everybody else all this love that I, that I feel if I'm not feeling it for myself Uh and that's where I struggle. And, and this, this, this whole, like, today's session has just been, I mean, this, this whole week has just been amazing. Like I have felt so amazing and just ev- all the love that I'm feeling from everybody and everything that has just been happening. And today's session, I have been crying multiple times throughout <laughs> everything that you guys have been saying. And it's just been so impactful. And I thank you. So I want to ask you this before I say what I want to say. Do you have a specific question for me? How can I embrace that courage more? How can I not look at it as a weakness? Because that's what I see it as in myself. Because it's been repeatedly beaten into me that this is a weakness versus it being my my strength and my strong point. You know, I can absolutely tie into tie what I wanted to say to you into your question. In general, whenever we are feeling an intense emotional response, 
um, from either a thought that we've had or something that someone has said, it makes the most sense to simply ask a question first before we respond. And in some, some situations, before we give somebody the business, you want to ask the question first because what they are saying has nothing really to do with you except for the fact that you, whatever you did triggered them. So what they're communicating to you in general is what you're doing is making me uncomfortable. So one of the best ways to empower yourself to feel brave and courageous and even in control and boss that sensitivity is to simply say, okay, they were triggered for whatever reason. Let me seek to understand before I function on my perspective from my past history, because that's all they're doing. They are telling you that you're making whatever they, you are doing and that's making them feel uncomfortable is because they got this past stuff that they've been through that's coming up and they're telling you stop i need you to stop because i'm not really doing my shit that's all it really is so instead of responding ask a question and try to understand them you're telling me i'm too sensitive what about that is causing an issue for you i'm a little confused because i'm simply trying to express how i feel right now and obviously how you feel is 100 percent valid if you should feel it i i find that when I come into challenging situations, especially like at work, when I have to, you know, assert myself or, you know, say like, no, you know, this is why I believe what I believe, or I, you know, I deserve a raise because I know I'm good at what I do. I, uh -huh. My immediate response is to cry. And I feel like before I even present my case, I have tears in my eyes and I apologize. And I feel that makes me come off as weaker than I am. Like, I know I'm a strong, badass bitch. Like, I know I'm strong. I know, like, like I exude, like, like my hair, like it tells like my confidence. Yes. Like, yes. I, I know you got it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, like I can be the shyest person in the room, but my hair and my, my face doesn't say that. And I want, I want to feel more confident when I go into places and not immediately cry. Like I feel, I tell people I'm like, I'm like a skunk or like a squid. Like my first reaction is like to just cry. Like I ink or I stink. Like <laughs> there's lots in the middle, but again, back to the whole honesty and being, you know, functioning with integrity. All of that is you. Why hide it? Again, you sweep in lots of things under the rug. Of course you're tripping and getting emotional. Let, let it all out and then let people decide whether or not they want to be in your space because the people who leave you should actually thank them and i'm co I'm coming to realize that i'm coming to realize that that i'm glad to be rid of those people the people that love me for who i am stick by me through they all say. the shit that they, i've they been because all they have to see is fact again you can't argue with facts if you let all all the all the good, ugly, all the in between out, and they stay, they are staying because they know what to expect from you, and they're okay with it. But if you can, if you try and say, okay, well, I don't need to be this person because that person's not okay with that person, or they only like this, so that's what I need to do. If you can't maintain that, who who can maintain walking in you know in costume? I love costume, but I can't. That's what, I can't wear costume. I can do it for five days a week for Halloween. Mm -hmm. other than that that's all i got <laughs> and i don't even stay in character the whole time i'm in costume i'm like this is what i got take it or leave it nobody can walk around in character their entire life of course we feel fragile because we're not walking in our truth and you cannot maintain that that is so much pressure to maintain we, we can't stick with lies we can stick with truth though that feels easy <laughs> It, truth is like, hard. Yeah, it can be. It doesn't have to be that. No, and I don't but want it to be. I want it to be. I, I want it to be my cape that I wear. You know, yeah. I want it to be my my Superman badge. I want truth to be everything. So I'm gonna say, look at the self talk. Look, look at the conversations you are having with yourself leading up to these these moments of emotion during and after, and go back and and reframe them to to where they're true and to where you can get to the point of understanding why you are doing that or feeling that way in that moment and trying to address the injury one thing at a time 
That's hard. That's hard to look, look within and and be honest with myself. And I'm I'm really I'm trying. <laughs> you said it. You said it. I heard you say it. Listen, I don't I don't lie. And if I do, you know I'm lying because I'm gonna tell you I'm lying. You said it. I heard you say you were badass. Don't convince yourself that you're not if you are. Period. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm trying to honor my feelings rather than let them control me. I'm trying to say, okay, I'm sad in this moment and it's okay to be sad in this moment. Go more and into like, it. So I'm sad in this moment because when this happened, it led me to feel that way and I felt that way because I was thinking this. Sit with it, walk yourself through it. Uncomfortable, keep going. Yes, I'm ready to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. I love it. <laughs> Thank love you. It. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Toots, for coming Thank you. on. So I did see another question. Um, I'm not sure if she wanted to come on, but I'll ask it here. Um, this is from Katie. Uh, she says, what is the best way to approach setting and holding boundaries with close friends? And how do we work with guilt over holding those boundaries when our friend pushes back on said boundary? So it's kind of similar to what, you know, a little bit of what we talked about, but I'm going to let you take that. Boundaries. I love boundaries. Again, if you understand why it makes sense for you and you understand the reason you're doing it and what you are okay with and you communicate that effectively and your friend continues to push, they're being super selfish, one, and they probably need to go, <laughs> to be honest with you. But like we we get to decide how uncomfortable we are and how and how much discomfort we want to have in the moment. But if we allow people to push against those boundaries, basically what we're doing is we're enabling them to do it. Why should we expect for them to stop if we let them do it? It doesn't make sense to expect for them to not do what they know they can and what you've given them evidence to be able to believe that they can do it. So if you decide what your boundaries are, you need to believe it. If you don't believe it, you should probably be saying something else and or simply not answering that question in the moment. It's okay to take a break and say, you know, I, I don't know yet, but let me get back to you. And then you go and do that work. I felt uncomfortable when they asked me that because I really wanted to say yes, but I, I really wanted to say no, but I felt the need to say yes. Okay, why did you feel the need to say yes? And if it's because this person has done so much for me, uh -huh, did you make them do it? But they decided to do it themselves. If they decided to do it themselves, then you don't have control over it. An example that I gave the clients uh, in the office I feel the need to say now is even if I put a gun to your head and I say, do this, or I will pull the trigger, you still have the choice to decide if you're going to do it. They have the choice to decide whether or not they're actually going to pull the trigger. But you still have control in the moment to decide if you are going to do what they say or not. And it's the same thing when we're talking about setting boundaries with, with, with friends and feeling guilty afterwards. Don't accept responsibility for something you are not responsible for. If you say no and they choose to catch feelings about it, they're responsible for, for choosing to catch feelings about it. You are responsible for having said no. But it makes sense for you to know and understand why you are saying no or why you are saying yes, because you need to be accepting and committing to it before, beforehand and the potential outcomes. So if you're expecting for them to be upset, what are you willing to do to manage that? Are you willing to say, hey, I really don't want to do this, but you're also a good friend to me. And so it's important to me for you to, to for you to know that you're a good friend for me. So this is the reason why I'm going to do it. If it was anybody else, I would not be okay with doing it. And to be honest with you, I only got 30 minutes. If you choose to give them 35, do it because you chose to give them 35, not because they are demanding it. If someone starts responding emotionally, they are pulling you in. And if they are pulling you in, guess what? They're never going to do it for themselves if you they're doing it. Like, think about your kids. Like, most of us have kids. And most of us have had our kid shoes, right, Latoya? Where we're like, put on your shoes, it's time to go. And the kid's like, I can't do it. The moment you stop and you tell that kid, I'm not putting on your shoes, I bet you they figure out how to put those shoes on, right? 
It's the same thing with our friends. If we never set those boundaries in a way that they can't grow and they will continue to rely on us to feed those needs, your job is to decide whether or not you're okay with that. Yep, that was a great question and a, a great answer. Um, I saw another one. There's there's lots of comments here, so you're gonna have, definitely gonna have a lot of <laughs> um, comments to go back to when after this live is over. Amy asks, "What? How can you be vulnerable with yourself if you've had to be strong all your life?" Amy, can you come alive and ask that question? Oh yes, Amy. I'm gonna put the um. Goodness, y'all, like, dang, I had to go all the way up for that one. Amy, I'm going to drop the link back in here. Um, Shamika said, could you come on live and ask that question? Okay. I think we don't have to be strong. We believe, and I, now I'm thinking about like labels and families. We believe that we have to be strong and we, oftentimes and we're expected to be but I could really tie that into like the last question and the last answer. Okay. We, we oftentimes end up getting stuck in like, you know, routine and expectations. And we get stuck in this, um, in this label and this position within families and within our relationships. And a lot of times what happens is when we decide to do something different, the people around us start having fits. And the reason they're having fits is because you are requiring that they adjust and they're not ready. <laughs> if, if you change, that means that they have to change too or do something different. So they tend to have tantrums and they tend to expect and like require that you don't change. So then you end up being stuck and really oftentimes feeling depressed in response to that. And so what it is is remaining resilient and reminding yourself on why you are making these decisions and then again having mercy for and grace for those people and also yourself because they're changing at the same time and they didn't get to decide because you decided for them that they had to that's when you get the most pushback think about like your again your kids when you tell your kids that they have to do something versus when they come and say you know hey mom i want to have this for dinner or can we have this? And they're asking questions and it's a, you know, engaged conversation. People go along with that so much faster than if you walk in the room and say, sit down. If you say, hey, how about, do you want to sit here or you want to sit there? They're like, hmm, huh, I think I want to sit here. But if you walk in the room and say, sit down, they're like, huh, what, what are we doing? It's the same thing when you're talking about changing your role in a relationship. You should accept responsibility that you were asking that person to do something that they had no say in doing and that's change and change usually requires that we get down to the nitty-gritty and be honest with ourselves and what have we been talking about the whole night that shit is hard it's hard yes all right so, so amy, amy said she said um she hasn't even well this was before i sent the link she said i haven't even you haven't even sent the link and I'm crying. Nope. So I don't know. She might not come okay. on. I think, I I think feel if you want me to add more to that, Amy, I will. But I, I was able to go ahead and uh, from my perspective anyway, answer your question. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, do you want to get on live? Because I would be able to tailor it a bit differently instead of giving a general answer. And again, y'all, if you've enjoyed this tonight and you are, are interested in working with Shamiko or someone from her team, because she does have, um, a t oh, there she is. Hold on. Let me be quiet. Here she comes. Yeah, I actually um, am working on, um, with Nova Luna Coach, my second company, working to do more shorts, kind of like what we did tonight. So if you guys have any questions or anything you want to post in the comments, then I will be glad to make a, a quick video and, and post it either on my, my Nova Luna Coach, Coach Instagram or the Points of Origin Instagram. Um, so you guys are able to kind of see them and access them there. Okay. I don't know where she went. Hopefully she comes back. Okay. Um, I don't know if she was having trouble getting in or not. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. Um, there was another I question. I at the house. Okay. <laughs> um, we have another question or series of questions um, coming from Heather. Uh, how do you release people you've been friends with for years who just don't get that you aren't in the same headspace you were in 
a year or more ago without hurting them? Like, how do you not feel guilty about it, even though you're bettering yourself? You're responsible for your guilty feelings. They're responsible for the feelings of being hurt. Don't cross the two. If they, if they, again, back to the last answer that I gave, if they are struggling to adjust, you can give them mercy. You can find an opportunity to find common grounds, um, to, you know, communicate authentically. I tend to say naked, communicate in a very naked and open way. And, you know, if you can't do that, why are you fighting? My, my answer, this is, kids teach us so much. This is a, a saying that I came up with in a conversation with my son. It was, you know, if you have to fight, there's likely a better way. Hmm. Again, being able to sit back and in, in some yeah. integrity and being honest, if you find yourself fighting, you're going about it all wrong. There is likely a better way. And not only that, you can't force people to be on a journey with you. Think about how many times you've tried to diet in a house with other people and they don't want to eat your, your rabbit food. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally no different than when we're talking about these relationships. Unfortunately, some relationships cannot grow with us. And it's also okay to put relationships on the shelf and get back to them. Mm. But what you need to not do is let them stunt your growth in the direction you are heading. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have a couple of relationships where the people are super important to me. And either I don't want to let them go or I can't let them go. But where I am with what I want and what I desire, where they are simply impeding my progress. And I can't not eat because you hungry. I can choose to share, but I don't want to perish. Mm. So if I choose to share, I need to first make sure that I get what I need to be successful. And then I choose what I want outside. Of it. I'm saying choose intentionally because it needs to be your decision. And if it's not your decision, sit there and think you won't have resentment afterwards. Because I promise you, you will. Ooh, yes, ma'am. It has to be your decision. It's the same thing with emotions. People choose their own emotions. If you're concerned about them being hurt, I wonder why they're going to be hurt. Is it because they don't want you to win? Or is it because they're not okay with coming with you? Is it because they are not okay with doing the work that they need to do to come with you? Why do they feel hurt? And also, if you guys are that good of a friend, why can they not come with you and have these conversations with you and say, hey, where you are going is really uncomfortable for me. So can you put me on a shelf for a little while? <laughs> What kind of, how do you, how are you defining this word friend? Like there's so many questions you can be asking yourself here. You got me like, <laughs> you got me going off, Shamika. Like I'm, I'm already the- like reflecting and I'm like, I need to get off this interview first before I start doing this. <laughs> I'm in the office and y'all asking me therapy questions. And man, I, I told you I'm passionate about what I do. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. We're going to do one last question. Um, and then we are going to wrap this up because she, she's given us so much already. Thank you so much, Shamika. Um, so apparently they want to, they also want an eyeshadow tutorial is what I'm seeing. At some point. <laughs> Listen, it is my birthday. Let's so you got me on this video tonight. I said, I'm not going nowhere tonight. I'm going to show up and show out, but it's weak. Because you know what, and I'll honestly, like one thing that I really love about like being able to be open to experiences. And like I mentioned earlier on the call, Latoya said, this is what we do when she didn't give me a choice. <laughs> of course I had a choice and it was to rock with her. So I said, you know what, this week, why not, why not love on me a little extra? Why not? You know, she didn't require that we show up every night, but I'm going to be here every night. And I appreciate it. <laughs> I will be here every single night. I, I was in the comments last night with Ivory. I was on the call with you guys on Monday. I'll be in the party on Friday in my lingerie. I'm going to be here particip- participating with you guys every single night. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out. And I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm available. I will answer. And I told you guys I love to learn. I love to teach. I will answer any questions you guys have. I don't know about this eyeshadow tutorial because I'm still learning. 
<laughs> but but I can bring you with me. I'm okay with that. Awesome. Okay. What, okay. So Nishamini says, what are some steps we can take to over, to, I'm sorry. What are some steps we can take to stop overcomplicating things? I'm such an overthinker. Uh-huh. Again, we can acknowledge, so in general, being an over, overthinker is connected with anxiety. So back to the drawing board. What am I worried about? <laughs> Am I reading you, Latoya? Yes, but go ahead because I need it. I need it. I got, I got it, my- it, it generally is. And you know, it's not that anxiety is bad or that it's it's whatever. Everybody experiences anxiety. It's just the level of anxiety that you experience and what you do with it, how it manifests. You know, if you are going to get to the drawing board and actually problem solve, I even get anxious a lot of times. So when I feel, I tend to feel like super tight and enclosed in here when I feel, I start to feel a little overwhelmed. And so, what I tend to do is, okay, because I don't like this feeling. So what's the list? What What's the to-do list? What do I have going on? What's necessary? What's not necessary? And when can I schedule a break? Because what's happening right now is not okay to continue indefinitely. And so what I tend to do is back to the, the, the nitty gritty of being honest. Yes, it would be amazing for me to check off every single item on this 100 item to-do list today. But at the expense of what? And am I, am I okay with that? I'll give you an example. Like I, again, I, I love to, one thing that drives me, I'm passionate about is being productive and producing. So there'll be times where I've been in the garage, like woodworking and I start to mess stuff up. <laughs> like I've been in this garage for three hours. I really, really want to complete this thing tonight. But all of a sudden I'm making foolish mistakes. I don't put the nail in the wrong way. And I hate to undo stuff. I hate it. So like, even like when I'm sewing, I, I do not like ripping out seams. I don't want to pull out a screw. I loathe it. So in being honest with myself, I've been done. I've done it two times. I've already put in a screw wrong and I got to pull it out two times. Let's go down this list. <laughs> What's going on with my faculties and when can I take a break? So I will simply back to the gym. I will simply say, okay, I pulled out two. If I have to pull out another one, I'm just going to take a break. Because you know what? I now realize that I'm hungry. Or I now realize it's one o'clock in the morning. I didn't mean to be out here until one o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to pull out these two screws. And I'm going to, let's just say I'm making a table. I'll get this last leg on. I wanted to stay in and sand it tonight. That, That just doesn't make sense because it's not good for me. Same thing back with the friend. It's not good for me. And I need to decide for myself. I am responsible for me. So I need to go ahead and decide what I need. Challenge myself, of course. But what is on this list? What is in my thoughts? And how? what can I address now? What can I address today? What do I need to enlist help on? What do I maybe need to set on the shelf because I maybe don't have enough information for? Ask yourself questions and try to seek to understand what's going on and why. If it's something like, so there are some things where we can't just behavioralize it or cognitive, you know, address it cognitively. There are some times we may need medication. I'm I'm not a a fan of medication, but I support medication when I feel that it's necessary. And everybody gets to decide that on their own. I tend to, as a therapist, encourage people to go and talk to the doctor along the process. But in all honesty, as again, as a therapist, if I feel we've been working on these things and they're just not hitting the nail on the hand, we've been doing it for a little while, or maybe you really can't do enough of them to really get enough relief, or it's not happening fast enough, maybe you'll ask for a little assistance as far as medication or things like that. But in all honesty, I would say don't be don't be selfish in your willingness to explore. That's all I would say with that. Like, if, if you're feeling stuck, what other information is available to help you answer your questions? Who else is available to help you answer your questions? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me let me write the last of that. Don't be selfish in your willingness to explore. Okay. Whoo. All right. So, um, thank you, Shamika. um I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you not only for you know how much you have uh blessed us tonight but just for being you 
for showing up um, and just for always um, being yourself. Because I think in that, like you showing up as you, it helps us to feel more comfortable with ourselves. And I think that's the beauty of our community, right? Like I've been so appreciating like all the uh, photos and videos this week of everyone just really taking time to just be comfortable with self. And that's what this challenge is all about. And Shamika does that all the time. She didn't need this challenge to do it. We see it in the group. You've seen her post in the group. Um, and so I really appreciate I've done my that. Work. I've, huh? done my work. I've done my work. Yes, it, it shows. It shows. So what I want to leave everyone with tonight, because, you know, we have homework. And so, you know, the past few days of homework have been kind of fun. So this one, you may not, it may not be your favorite <laughs> homework of this challenge, but I think it's still very, um, it's going to be helpful and necessary. Um, I want us to do some mirror work. Spend some time with yourself in front of a mirror. Have a conversation with yourself. Yeah. Ask yourself some questions. You know, where are you least confident? What are some things that you're fearful of? What are your fears? What are your worries? And maybe what would you do if you weren't afraid? Use uh, some of the strategies that Shamika talked about tonight. Ask yourself some of the questions. I know y'all have been reading. Uh, I'm sorry. Some of y'all have been writing down and jotting down some notes mm -hmm. of things that she said, practical steps that you can take to, you know, um, confront and um, deal with the things that you're dealing with. Appreciate uh, Toots for coming on to ask the questions that she asked and being open. Of course, she said she's 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 super comfortable being vulnerable. It's in owning that sensitivity and that vulnerability in in um, showing it as in, in in viewing it not as a weakness but as a part of who she is and 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 owning that. So again, there is there's not going to be any. Um, post this tomorrow type of homework. This is something that you really just have to do for yourself. Um, if you want to share something about it tomorrow, that's okay, but it's not required because this is this is super personal, right? Mm -hmm. um, these conversations that we have with ourselves. Um, so- If you guys need any support, send me a message. Uh, and I wanna add, um, not to cut you off of toys, but what, like when we're in the mirror, I want you guys to really look and ask yourself questions like, what do I think about this? And, and it's not necessarily always, again, I'm a therapist. A lot of these things are actually in general rooted in our thoughts from our past experiences. So what do I think about this? What do I think it means about me? And where, like what evidence do I have to support this? Even if it's like a yucky thought, experience or feeling, what evidence do you have to support that thought that you just said? And can you disprove it? Can you find evidence to prove it and or support it as false? Okay, I'm gonna definitely have to go back and write those questions down because I'm gonna put that in the group. Um, those are definitely some questions uh, to ask yourself as you're, as you're doing that. So when I say mirror work again, y'all, it's nothing super complicated. It's literally spending time with yourself in front of a mirror. Look yourself in the eye. Don't, don't be looking out the corner, like standing in front of the mirror. Don't just be like, you know, averting your eyes and not looking at yourself. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But that it, we talked about that in the beginning, right? We talked about being uncomfortable, at least when you're uncomfortable in this situation, it's just you, you know, have that time for yourself and, and do that. So everybody's beautiful and every single body is beautiful. Amen to that. And you know what, y'all, like when you're doing this too, like why, why did I ask Shamika to come on here? Why did I ask her to, to kind of uh, share this topic? You wouldn't believe like how important this is as like a, a precursor to doing a boudoir session. Like it's, it literally has nothing to do with looking sexy at all. It's all about the feeling and it's all about, you know, going within and, 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 doing that work like it's work I had uh the session that I had with Zakia um y'all saw that it was like the last session that one of the last sessions that we did in December and um she she loved her session and she told me she's like this was great I felt great and this was beautiful but she said this was also work because when she stepped in front of that mirror like it got real it gets real but it's also important for you to do too 
Um, we don't, we don't want to walk around hidden from ourselves. We don't want to walk around with masks. Like it's going to make you a stronger person. It's going to make you a stronger woman. So this is, this is why we're doing this. (laughs) Um, and it's, it's only to, to help you challenge yourself, um, in that, in that journey. So once again, thank you y'all know. So tell us Shamika, how the folks can, um, can find you, reach you, or otherwise connect with you? So I am primarily right now, I'm actually building the YouTube channel for Nova Luna Coach, um, but I'm primarily on, on Instagram, on IG, um, with Nova Luna Coach and Points of Origin LLC. Um, Nova Luna Coach, if you guys are wanting more information like this, Nova Luna Coach would be the best place to get it, because like I said, I will be posting um, shorts there over the next uh, few weeks. Latoya and I both talked about, you know, posting more videos on YouTube and things like that. And so if that's what you're looking for, that's where you'll get it, either in the Nova Luna Coach IG or in the Nova Luna Coach um, YouTube. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching. Uh, I will see you in the group. So I'm still looking for those uh, videos from day two, yesterday. They two's homework. So I'm still looking for those. Um, But we will see you in the group and we'll see you tomorrow night Um, On Facebook Live at 9 p.m., we will be talking to Tori Bolden of The Stylet, and she's going to help us get our threads together uh, for our shoot and just in feeling confident about what we're wearing in general. So y'all have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, ladies.